have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Doodab is a little small card game that plays technically in about eight minutes, but you play three rounds. And that you're probably playing three rounds not so much for the fun of it, but you're playing that to levelize the score. And because each round, I guess it could just pull either other way depending on the card play. And you kind of want to even out the luck. I'm assuming that's why you play three times. As a filler that you would play with kids one round, I like the game a lot more. Three rounds of this, ah, I'm pulling my hair out. I don't like it that much. So the game goes on too long, probably to take some luck out of it. But if you wanted to play it just one round um, and have more of that swinginess or luck involved in it, I think the game plays better. Really, though, I think this is a complete, complete, complete pass. Um, the, it's okay. It's got some fun little card play to it. I don't particularly enjoy that. I don't particularly enjoy this game. It sometimes seems like we would just sit around and draw cards until one of us had to play because nobody wanted to take all those points because taking those points can be really bad. And then maybe you kind of luck out that you can play on the second one. Because uh, when you get the five in your hand, you have to play a card. I think that happens sometimes, you know, to, to kind of a bust. That might have been some group think. Um... The caveman theme, totally just thrown on there. It means absolutely nothing. Although the art is very, very cute, and I think is very appealing, and I like it quite a bit. I almost wish this universe or this artwork were on a better game or a different game that utilized it a little bit more. Say Stone Age or Stone Age-esque or something like that. The bottom line is you're going to get a small card game that probably hangs around too long. That's really just about having the right card in your hand and being able to play it. You don't have a lot of control. And the more players that are in the game, I think the less control maybe you have. Um, I, I don't have a lot of good things to say about this. I think that if you like this type of game and you want a little game where you're just playing cards, but really you're just chatting, I think that this would fit that market very, very well. Otherwise, I'm not sure it has strategic thinking or a lot of decisions. I don't think you can go in saying, okay, I learned this time. Next time I'm going to do this in the game. I don't feel like that's in it. Otherwise, I mean, it, it may be something you'd play with your kids, but there's quite a bit of little things, mental gymnastics. The color can't match, the symbol can't match, and the number has to be one or up. Then you do a little doodop thing, and then you do this. I don't know. And the scoring is kind of weird. I don't feel like you have a lot of control over what you score. So the fact that you lose points for the shamans, and you get you want the doodops to counterbalance this and that, but the shamans steal them... I don't know. I, I didn't feel like I had any control over my scoring. And maybe it's just because somebody who really ended this game and played it 50 times, which I didn't nearly play it that much, didn't want to. Um, I'm going to tell you, go ahead and pass this one. I think there are better card games out there. Uh, I think there are better card games that does what this one is attempting to do. And I think that the cutesy theme and the attractive box that will kind of pull you in isn't really there in the game. The pictures are, but the theme is not. So you're really just playing the best possible cards you can on a turn. And that's about it. You just never want to put the sixth card down. That's pretty much the gist of it. Um, so this one's going to be a pass. I'm going to go ahead and purge this one. This one is not one that's going to stick around very long at all. Here are the components for Dudab, or Doodab as we call it. Uh, it's a little card game that fits right in your hand. <laughs> I don't like these boxes. Uh, and it's a very nice box, don't get me wrong. It's just always hard to open. I like the ones with the little slits on it. You can get some art but, or some air in there. But I wanted to showcase this because I just have the darnest trouble. You're going to get a rule book in a couple languages. I put the English version on bottom. For some dumb reason it's just a fold out very long as you can see uh the rule book's not very good i had a problem with it i'll get into that in the rules section but it's just a fold out 
with some important rules at the bottom. It's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, you get a deck of cards. The cards are really nice. They shuffle really well. You're going to see some cutesy artwork pictures. You're going to see some different colors and different symbols. It has some funny shaman cards. Doodob. Uh, very good. I mean, the artwork is great for a family. It looks great. It brings the caveman thing on. I mean, the, it's just pasted on. It is what it is. But uh, the cards are really good quality. There's not a whole lot to say. They shuffle well. The backs seem to match up really well, and they feel great. I think the rules are okay. It's kind of those rules that fold out. I honestly, I have to admit, it was there, what I needed to know. But if you go to the back where it says important rules, that is really what you want to concentrate. Read that first, then go through the rules, and then read that again, because that is where the game is at. And that's really your player aid and what you got to remember. It's what the Shaman does, it's what the Doodob does, everything else kind of flows pretty easily. Um, it's very easy to play something wrong in this game. For such a simple little card game, I felt like the Doodobs and the Shaman perhaps were needlessly complicated, especially the Doodob. Uh, the scoring is pretty straightforward. I mean, I can show you that in 10 seconds and you'll probably have it down. Otherwise, the rules were okay. So when the game starts, you're going to have a number of columns based on the number of players. And you'll have some cards in your hand. On your turn, uh, you'll, you'll play a card or draw a card. So if there wasn't any card I wanted to play, I can draw. If you ever blow two cards in your hand, you only have one card or less, then you must draw a card at the end of your turn. If you ever have five cards in your hand, you cannot draw a card, you must play a card. If for some reason you have five cards and nothing is playable, you show it to everybody else, you draw a card from the deck, and now you have to put one of these in your scoring pile. In this case, I think the lowest number is best, and then the next person will go. That's kind of how that works. Uh, what you're doing here is you're trying to score the least amount of points. Think golf. And how you're going to do that is by utilizing these do dab cards. You're going to have three types of cards in this deck. You're going to have a do dab card, a shaman card, which is this guy. You'll have different colors. And you'll have number cards. So at the end of the game, you're going to take your scoring pile. And every shaman card you had is going to take a doodab card and score you zero points and go away. So if you had two shamans and two doodabs, then you're going to score zero points for them. If you had a doodab card, um, and this is your scoring, let's say, you will take likely your highest scoring card because this will be negative. The doodab, if there's no more shaman cards, will take a card and make it negative. So this scores negative four points. Then you will get a positive point points for every card that doesn't have a doodob attached to it. You always get the face value. So this is three plus one is four. With my negative four, my score would be zero. One more illustration. So at the end of the game, I would take my shaman cards and my doodobs and I would set them aside. So I have two shamans, three doodobs, and three scoring cards. And I'm gonna choose a scoring card that isn't the same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. So they have three scoring cards, I have three doodobs and two shamans. Every shaman card, I'll put those up here, will steal one of my doodobs and score zero points. Then I will take my doodob and attach it to one of my cards, likely my strongest card. And the reason why is this is gonna make my score negative. So this is zero, zero, negative four. Then I would take my other two cards, just add them up. One plus one is two, those are positive points. So negative four plus positive two is negative two. My score is negative two. Keeping in mind, I want the longest score. And you will play a number of rounds based on the number of players you have. One round for each player. Here you will set up a number of columns based on the number of players playing. Uh, you'll see four, green hand, one, bearskin, uh, red, and yellow, bearskin, four. On my turn, I can play a card, but it has to be a different color, a different symbol, and one or, or higher or greater. So I cannot play the two here because it's not two lower. It's two lower instead of one. I cannot play it here because the color is the same and I cannot play it here because it's not one less, which would be three. Now going through his again, I got a yellow hand three. Can't play it here because the, the colors match. I can't play it here because it's not plus one. I, if it was a two, I could play it here, but I cannot play it here because the symbols match. So that's kind of what you're doing. You're just trying to find something that that will fit in there. So let me show you one that does fit. 
I could play the blue three bearskin here? No, I cannot because the symbols match. Could I play it here? No, because the number is not plus or minus one. Could I play it here? Yes, because the symbols are different, the colors are different, and it's plus or minus one. And that's kind of how the game goes. So on another turn, could I play this here? No, because the number is not plus or minus one. Could I play it here? Yes, because the color is different. The number is plus or minus one, so it's, it's two, which is plus one, and the symbols are different. I could have also played it here because the symbols are different, the colors are different, and the numbers plus or minus one. Other thing you'll have is you'll have these shaman cards. And you can play these shaman cards down on the board. But they have to be played on a matching color. So I could have played this on the red, I could not have played it on yellow, and I could not have played it on green. The color must match. Now when I play a shaman card, the other player has three, one of three choices. They can lay down another shaman of any color and that would be a fair play. So even though the color doesn't match, I can put a shaman on top of a shaman. That's a viable thing to do there. Or you can lay a doodop card down. So I can always lay a doodop card down on top of any shaman, like so. Or the player will take the top card of the deck and draw this many cards into his hand. So I, whatever number it is, I would draw three cards into my hand. Keeping in mind, if you go over five, you have to put cards over five the sixth seventh eighth card and so on into your scoring pile so that can dictate that you don't always want to draw cards so that's how the shaman cards work you're also going to have doodop cards and the way these doodop cards work is that when you play a doodop card the next player has to lay a number card so you will either pick a symbol a color or a number four green or hand and the next person has to play that so if I called hand, I could not play this card because this is the woolly mammoth. If I called two, I could not play this because it's a three. And if I called red, I could not play this because it was a blue. But had I played blue, called blue, the next player could just play that card down very easily. If, um, another thing I could do is, if, if he played a doodob card and yelled green, I can always play a doodob on top of a doodob. That's fine. And if I can't play anything, I would have to draw a card. Um, and that's just kind of how those cards work. So really there's three different types of cards that are working for you. The number cards, the shaman cards, and the doodah. Now if, if a card ever gets six in a row, one, two, three, four, five, six, then I would take the top five that were played first. These would go in my scoring pile, and they're there for the rest of the game, and this card would be out. The sixth card, the one I just played, would be the card that would start the next column. And you continue to do that until the draw pile is out, and you play a number of rounds, number of players and you score like I showed you before. So that's how you play Doodob. Who should buy this game? I think anybody attracted by the box art. The box art is really cute. You like them your cards. If you're looking for a simple card game, something a little bit different because a lot of times you just want to play a different game, uh, but the conversation is really what you want to keep up. Or maybe even as a light filler where you just, when everybody shows up, you just pack it up and don't really care who wins. I would probably say pass this one altogether. If you're going to think about this one, it's probably cheap or maybe to get free shipping on something and that's fine. Um, otherwise, this is a purge for me and I would tell you to probably pass this one all by. I don't think there's anything here that you need to see. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.